Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. In this video, I will be discussing in-app notifications for model-driven apps, which is currently in preview. And you're probably wondering, okay, well, we were already able to create notifications, right? Push notifications using Power Automate. So what's the difference here? Well, the difference is that push notifications are notifications that are only being pushed to mobile devices. So people who use the, for example, their laptop or a desktop, right, to access the application through a browser will not see those notifications. So that's where these in-app notifications come in. Go ahead and grab some popcorn and let's take a look. The first thing I want to share is that these notifications are a bit different from those push notifications that we're already used to. And what I mean by this is that normally you don't see an actual record being created when we're creating those push notifications, right? So that's different with these in-app notifications. If you want to show notification, you're going to need to create a row or, or record right in that new notification table in Dynamics 365. So the system name for this table is app notification, which is obviously important to know, right? When you're creating these notifications. And the way that this works is that the system will automatically look for those new rows in a notification table. And if those notifications are found, then they're going to be shown in the application. And obviously how those notifications are going to be displayed, what they look like, that's completely configurable. Now, before you can start notifications, you're also going to have to enable this feature and, and keep in mind, this is a preview feature, right? So I would not recommend doing this in a production environment. So make sure you use a sandbox instance instead. Now, before I'm going to go there, um, I want to show you first how this works. So what I've done is obviously I've enabled the feature and then I actually used a Power Automate flow to create uh, some of those notifications and then you'll see them pop up in the application. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a phone call record. So I'm just going to go here to a lead because because that's the record, the table that I used to create those notifications. So let's just I'm going to go ahead and just open a lead here. And here you can see those notifications, right? There was a new phone call created and boom, those notifications are now showing up. At any particular point in time, I can just go ahead and view my notifications here as well. And from here, right, you can see I can dismiss any notification here, or I can just say this miss all. So now I don't have any notifications. So let's again, go ahead and create that phone call record. And I'm going to put in as the subject call with Susanna to follow up on lead. You can put a description in here as well. Oh, I cannot type today. And then I'm going to go ahead and save and close. So this is what's going to trigger that flow that I have configured for this. And then at some point that notification is going to show. Now I noticed if I'm just sitting on this page, nothing is really happening. So usually what I do is what the end user would do, right? I'm going to just go ahead and work on things in the application. I'm going to scroll back and forth through different things. Let's go to invoices. Let's go to orders. And now you can see, right, that my notification just popped up. And then if I go here, 
right? I can again see all of any of the missed notifications that I had there as well. All right, so now let's take a look at some of that setup. I'm going to go ahead and close this. So you will notice that notifications are enabled if you see this little bell icon over here. So what we can do is I'm actually going to navigate to a different place. I think customer service hub might not have it enabled yet. Let's just check to make sure. All right, so it's not enabled in here yet. So what we need to do is open the app where you want to enable that notification functionality. And once you're there, you're going to go ahead and click on F12 on your keyboard, or you can just right click and say inspect because you want to open the console. So I'm going to click here on console and then below here on the bottom is where you're going to go ahead and add some code. And this is also uh, on my website on the article that's related to this particular video, but this is what that code looks like. So the only thing you need to replace is the app unique name. And if you're wondering, well, where do I get that unique name? You can actually go ahead here inside this right the app designer so i'm going to open the app designer here and i'm going to click here on properties and this is that unique name that you need to fill out over here so that's why i got right customer service hub over here if i wanted to for example get the name for the sales hub i will open that in my app designer get properties and this is the unique name of the sales hub. So let's go ahead and go back here. We're going to copy this code here. And the only thing we have to do here is just go ahead and we're going to paste that in there. And then you're going to hit enter. And that's really all that you have to do from right when I'm talking about copying and pasting that code. And then once you've done that, you need to actually publish that app again, right? So I'm going to go back to app designer and I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to hit publish. Okay. And then I'm going to do a hard refresh. I can close all of this stuff. I'm going to click inspect. I'm going to right click here on my refresh screen. I'm going to say empty cache and hard reload. And that's really all that you have to do. And now you should see that little bell icon, as you can see right over here and the notifications have now been enabled. So that's how easy that is. Now there are many ways in how we can create these notifications. So you can use the create record API and Microsoft actually has some examples of how you can create some of those app notifications, right? So I will drop the link to this website also in the video, but here you can kind of see, right? Being able to send basic in-app notifications by using that client API, using the web API, and here's some details about that notification uh, table as well, right? There's a lot of information in here. How do you change the notification icon, right? So a lot of information over here. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use a power automate flow to create those notifications. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to flow.microsoft.com. You got to make sure obviously that you are in the correct environments, which I am. And I'm going to show you my flow that I created over here. This is that in-app notification on a new call. So you're going to go ahead and make sure that you're going to do an automated cloud flow. That's what you want to do. And I, I really 
like the larger page so I'm just gonna go ahead and click skip on this and now I can start building my flow so I'm gonna pick Microsoft Dataverse and I want this to run when a row is added, right? So we're just going to click here when a row is added, modified, or deleted. <clears throat> and I want this to run when a record is added, right? We said we had a phone call that's been created. So I'm going to say phone calls. My scope is organization. I want this to happen for everybody. And then you can run this however you want. I actually want to run this as the modifying user. And, and that's really all you have to put in that trigger. So in the next step, we're going to create that row in that modification table, notification table, right? So I'm going to click over here. And again, we're going to do Microsoft Dataverse. And I want to add a new row, right? I want to create that record. So this is where we're going to create a notification. So notification. And you can see here, I have two notifications in there. So this is where you could even rename that notifications table if you have multiple tables in there already. Let me just see if this is the correct one. And yes, I actually picked the correct one. And I know that because of these fields that I see over here. So. I'm going to first put that title field in here and you saw that earlier when it said new notification created. Did I actually get rid of it? Oh, it's not here, is it? Yeah, no. I actually just ran my flow again and I didn't feel like you guys had to see this in this video. So let's see here if we're going to get that notification again, it should pop up and there it is. So when we're creating that flow, oops, let me just close that. You can see here, this is actually the title. And then this is actually what I'm going to put over here in my body, right? So this is that title, new phone call created. And again, this is what's showing up in the body. So I'm going to type that in here, new phone call created. I'm going to do a couple of explanation points in here as well. And the body is really what's showing up over here. So I'm pulling in some data from that related phone call over here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in call regarding and then colon. And this is regarding, I want to pull in the subject of that phone call. So you can just do like you normally do with any flow. You can just grab some of that dynamic content, right? Call regarding and whatever is in the subject field. Now this data field in this step is actually a JSON structure. And that provides us with a more advanced control over the notification. So if you don't, if you're not going to use this, then uh, you can actually just leave this blank, but obviously those make for better notifications, right? And they would need to be build, build up by using the examples that you can find on that Microsoft site that I just showed you. Now, I don't know how to write JSON, so I'm just going to leave this field blank and just keep it simple. Then you also see an expiry over here. And this is, as you can see, the specified number of seconds that uh, after that passes, the notification will be deleted. So you can enter anything you want in here. I'm just going to do uh, 1200 seconds, which is about 20 minutes, I think. Uh, but that's really what that is. And then we have the icon type. And if I go back here, that's this little icon that you see over there so i can oops i can pick an icon you can see here failure info mention success warning i don't know what this custom thing is i didn't really play around with it but i'm assuming we can do our own custom icons i i don't know but that's definitely something you can try out so i just picked a success icon to get that little check mark 
And then here, model driven app, you can kind of see here model driven app in which the notification needs to be shown. So if you're not specifying that, then that notification is going to show in all apps. And that's probably what we want, right? Notification. I'm not really using any of that, but then we have, this is important because this, the owner is really who is going to see this notification. And I want the owner of that phone call record to see that notification. So I'm going to type in here system users and then parentheses. And now I'm going to search for that owner field. And that's obviously right. The value uh, over here. And I'm going to do close parentheses and that is really it. You could also set a priority. I didn't feel like it was doing anything. It was showing me high priority of that uh, notification. So I don't know, maybe it's if it's high priority, that's the first one to be shown. I am not sure, but that's definitely uh, something that you can set obviously as well. And that is really it. You just got to make sure you name your flow and you save your flow and then you want to obviously test that as well now a thing that i noticed is that in here you cannot set how long that notification is going to show up right so the reason for that is that this is actually an end user setting so if i go back here to dynamics 365 you can see here in my notifications on the bottom, I have a settings button over here, and that's where I can configure that. So first of all, you want to make sure that those toasts are on, and I believe by default they are. And then this is where you can set the duration, right? How long is that notification going to show up? So that's where you can do that. And then you can save that. And that is all you have to do. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Have a great day, everybody.